that we have a good understanding of what is required when owning an online store and have undertaken some important first steps, let's head back into the WordPress dashboard and explore the WooCommerce plugin. To get started with WooCommerce, we must first install their plugin. Let's head to the plugins area and select Add New. Type WooCommerce into the search field and once the results have loaded, you should see the WooCommerce plugin as the first result. Select the Install Now button and wait a few moments for the plugin to install. Once complete, you can then activate the plugin. As soon as WooCommerce is activated, you will be redirected to the setup screen. Here we are able to continue with the setup of our store. If you would prefer to manually set up your store, you can select the Skip option located at the bottom of the page. All of these details can be entered manually at a later stage if required. The first option you'll see enables you to input your store address. Once you have entered your address, select Continue. You will now be asked if you would like to share tracking data. We'll select No Thanks, but this decision is entirely up to you. Next, choose the appropriate industry and continue. The next screen will allow you to specify the types of products you are going to sell. In our store, we plan on selling physical and downloadable products. So these are the two options that we'll select. In the next area, we can enter some data about our products and whether we currently sell elsewhere. We'll select one to 10 products in the first field and in the second field, we'll select yes, in person at physical stores and events. Under what's your current annual revenue, we'll set the appropriate amount. Next, we can see that WooCommerce would like to add some additional recommended features. Select the arrow to view more information about these features. And if you feel that you could benefit from any of these, feel free to leave them checked. We'll uncheck the recommended features for now, but please note these can all be added at a later stage if required. The final step in our setup is to tell WooCommerce which theme we would like to use. Our website currently uses the Hello Elementor theme and we plan to continue doing so, so this is what we'll select. OK, the initial store setup is now complete and as you can see we're taken to the WooCommerce home screen. We'll revisit the store settings later in the course to further configure other aspects of the store like shipping, taxes and payment providers. Let's close this pop-up window and head over to the Pages section to better understand the pages associated with WooCommerce. As you can see, WooCommerce has automatically created several pages for our new store. The first three pages, Cart, Checkout, and My Account, can all be edited here using the Elementor editor. The Cart page will allow your customers to view, amend, and review the products they've added to purchase. The Checkout page is where your customers will enter their billing, shipping, and payment information. And finally, the My Account page is where your customers can view their order details, amend their account settings like billing information, or update their password. The fourth page, which WooCommerce has automatically created, is Shop. This page by default will show your product archive and can be edited using the Elementor Theme Builder, which we'll explore later in this course. Now that we have acquainted ourselves with the pages associated with WooCommerce, we can take a further look at the store settings. Head to WooCommerce, Settings. The Settings area contains several tabs which allow you to manage many aspects of your store. Later in our course, we'll cover the Payment, Shipping and Email sections. For now, ensure that you have the General tab selected. If you have followed the WooCommerce setup so far, some of this information will already be filled in. If not, take some time now to fill in your store details. In this area, we can also configure the selling location, shipping location, and default customer location. We'll revisit these options when we configure our shipping options. We are also able to specify whether or not we wish to enable taxes and the use of coupons. Finally, at the bottom, we can amend the currency options if required. Remember to save your changes before navigating away from this tab. Next, we'll switch over to the Product tab, where you can see there are three sub-areas, General, Inventory, and Downloadable Products. First, let's take a look at the General area. By default, WooCommerce has already selected our page titled Shop to be the default shop page. 
If you would like to change this page, you can make the amendment here. Add to Cart Behavior allows you to declare if you would like customers to be taken to the cart page upon adding a product. And by default, Ajax is enabled on the archive page which provides a smoother experience for your customers, as it doesn't require the page to reload for an item to be added to the cart. As standard, WooCommerce provides a placeholder image. If you would like to change this image, simply amend the attachment ID here to switch to an image of your choice. To find the ID of an image, simply open your media library, select an image, and in the URL bar, copy the number that you see here. If you would like to change the measurement units used within your store, you can do so here. And finally, you will see the review and ratings options located at the bottom of the page. Here you can switch on and off ratings and reviews and fine tune the options associated with these. We're going to leave these all as default for our store, but please note that any of these configurations can be amended at any time. The second subsection we have is to manage the inventory for our store. By default, you can see that stock management is enabled. However, if your store doesn't require this, you can switch this option off here. If you do wish to have stock management enabled, you will see several additional options here. We can enable a specific time cap to hold stock, switch on low and out of stock notifications, as well as managing the email addresses that these notifications are sent to. We can also set the low and out of stock thresholds and declare whether we would like out of stock items to be hidden from our store completely. The third and final subsection that we see here is for downloadable products. Here you are able to amend the download method, access restrictions, and file name configuration. Now that we've finished configuring our products, we're ready to move on to the tax settings. It's important to spend some time here when first setting up your store, as every country has different tax rules. By ensuring your tax configuration is correct before your store goes live, you'll be making sure that your store is compliant with your local authorities. We already enabled the tax option when we configured our general settings, but if you miss this, simply head back to the general tab and switch this option on. Now switch back to the tax tab and let's go over each of these options so that you have a better understanding of how to set up tax on your store. The first option here asks if you would like to enter prices inclusive or exclusive of tax. We'll set this to yes as we plan to enter our prices including tax. Calculate tax based on allows you to specify the location which is used to calculate your tax. For our store, we'll set this as shop base address as we would like the local tax rules to be applied to all purchases. Shipping tax class will leave as default as we would like the tax to be based on the cart items themselves. Rounding simply displays the tax which is being added to the order in one clear to see amount rather than per line. We'll leave this on. The next section allows you to create additional custom tax classes. As you can see, we already have two default classes created, reduced rate and zero rate. Our store doesn't require any custom classes, but if you need to create any, simply add the name of your new tax class into the text area on a new line and save your changes. The new tax class will then appear in the top navigation alongside the other tax options. Let's quickly remove our example tax class as we do not require it for our store. Next we can state if we would like our prices to be displayed including or excluding tax. We'll set this to including and we'll do the same for the next option which controls the pricing display on the cart and checkout pages. If you would like to display a suffix to your prices, you can enter that here. For example, you could include including VAT. We'll leave this blank for our store. And the final option we see here is to set the display of our tax totals. This determines if multiple taxes get displayed as one total during checkout or as an itemized list of taxes. We'll set this to as a single total. Now that we have configured the general settings for our tax, we are ready to move on to setting the rates for each option. Select standard rates, and as you can see, we're presented with the tax rate table. Here you can define your standard tax rates, one location per line if required. 
The default asterisk applies the tax rate to all locations. But if you need to, you can enter a country code, state code, postcode, and even a city if you need to fine tune your tax options. We'll leave all of these as default as we would like to apply a global tax rate in our store. Under tax rate, we'll enter 20%. Tax name allows you to amend the name of this tax option. We'll enter 20% into this field, so that it's clear which tax rate this is. And if you have set up multiple tax rates here, you can specify the priority in which they're used, as well as applying compound and shipping taxes. Once you have finished, save your changes and switch to reduce rate. As you can see, we're presented with the same tax rate table. We'll keep most of the same settings here, except our reduced tax rate of 5%. Finally, we'll switch to the zero rate tax option. And as you can see, this has already been set to 0%, so we can leave this as it is. Our tax rates are now completely configured, and when it comes to creating our products, we'll explore the options on how to apply these tax rates to the products in our store. Let's now move on to the accounts and privacy settings. Upon installing WooCommerce, there were several default account and privacy options configured. If these do not suit your requirements, these can all be changed here. As you can see, WooCommerce has automatically enabled the option for customers to be able to place an order without an account. If your store requires customers to have an account, you can disable this option here. Next, we have an option to allow customers to log into their existing account during the checkout process. We'll enable this option. As standard, WooCommerce will create your customer account when they place their first order. The customer will automatically receive their username and password in an email. If you would like customers to be able to manually create an account or create an account during checkout, you have these options available here. The next area allows you to configure several aspects with regards to personal data and privacy. It's a good idea to consult your company's data and privacy policies before setting these options. You can amend the text shown when referencing your privacy policy on the registration and checkout pages. Please note that you must set your privacy policy in the general WordPress settings for this to work on your store. To do this, simply create your privacy page, then in Settings, Privacy, set your new page like so. You also have the option to amend how long your store retains personal data. Again, it's best to consult your company's privacy and data policies before configuring this section. For our store, we'll leave these as default. The last section we'll explore for now is the Advanced tab. Here you'll see that WooCommerce has automatically selected the newly created pages for Cart, Checkout and the My Account page. Next you should specify where your terms and conditions are located, as WooCommerce will automatically insert a link within the Checkout page. Checking the Force Secure Checkout button is good practice to ensure a secure connection between your store and your customers. Please note that this does require a valid SSL certificate. And finally, if you need to amend the endpoints associated with the checkout and account pages, you can do so here. Once finished, save your changes. Ensure you dedicate some time to setting up and configuring your WooCommerce settings. By doing so, you will give yourself the best chance to first of all, understand all of the available features present in WooCommerce, and secondly, guarantee that your store is ready for your customers to receive a flawless experience when they purchase from you. In our next lesson, we're going to learn how to create products and categories.